Welcome to Beyond the Trailer's coverage of the 2016 Academy Awards, giving you an in-depth look at the top categories in a year where the ceremony has been overshadowed by controversy. Will anyone show up? Will anyone watch? In response to the shocking lack of diversity amongst the nominations for the second year in a row, the Academy has already implemented sweeping reforms for next year's vote. But you can let your voice be heard this year and be on the trailer's annual Oscar poll, where there is not only a writing category, but also this year, you can vote on whether or not Straight Outta Compton, Creed, and Beasts of No Nations deserve to at least be nominated. The link for the poll is in the video description, and right now, let's take a look at the movies that were nominated for Best Picture. The Big Short While it's pretty shocking to see an Adam McKay movie nominated for Best Picture, in fact it has five nominations overall, it's become business as usual to see Brad Pitt and author Michael Lewis at the Oscars. Lewis is three for three now with the blindside Moneyball in the Big Short, while Pitt has become quite the savvy awards producer. That's right, looks like the field is no longer dominated by just Harvey Weinstein and Scott Rudin. In fact, neither one of those guys has a Best Picture contender this year. But in addition to producing Moneyball and The Big Short, Pitt also produced Selma and 12 Years a Slave, for which he won his first Oscar, as a producer and not for acting. And while it lost out to The Martian in the Best Picture Comedy or Musical category at the Golden Globes, it just won Best Picture from the Producers Guild of America. And Guild wins are huge because they represent voting blocks within the Academy. Although, while many commented there was nothing funny about The Martian, there really wasn't a lot to laugh about in The Big Short. Yes, while an Oscar win for all these other movies would be nice, giving the gold to The Big Short could potentially do some real good going forward if it can open people's eyes to the warning that this movie tries to be. Bridge of Spies Well, isn't this nice? That's the reaction many people had to Bridge of Spies in general when they saw it in theaters, if they saw it in theaters, because it's without a doubt a handsomely made film. It's Spielberg and Hanks together again, doing what they do best, but not really pushing themselves outside of their comfort zone either. I mean, to be honest, Bridge of Spies has about zero chance of winning here. And can you really say that this film in Brooklyn, which showcase important topics long fallen out of favor and arguably overexposed at this point, deserve to be nominated over more modern films like Straight Outta Compton, Creed, and Beasts of No Nation? Uh, Academy voters, your age and out-of-touchness is showing. But in all seriousness, Bridge of Spies is a nifty little movie that does deserve your time and money, just not an Oscar. But this is also a nice little nod to the days when DreamWorks dominated the Oscar race, and this has got to make Disney even more frustrated that they're losing Spielberg to Universal, as the only times they've made it into this category over the last few years was via Spielberg and his DreamWorks shingle, and Pixar. But Pixar ain't never going nowhere. <laughs> Brooklyn. film has left many scratching their heads, including me. But that doesn't mean this is one of those out-of-left-field nominations like The Reader. No, sir. Some audiences have really taken to Brooklyn, which has been doing solid box office business for three whole months, thanks to very strong word of mouth. Critics like it, too, as does the industry, as it's made almost all of the year's top ten lists. What's driving this film's award success? because we all know that quality isn't enough. It certainly isn't director John Crowley who's coming off of the non-starter closed circuit, and it's not screenwriter Nick Hornby either, who was nominated for an education, but has had plenty of his other films ignored by the Academy. Saoirse Ronan's star-making turn? Well, she's got a Best Actress nomination. Why Best Picture? That's likely thanks to Fox Searchlight, which has evolved into a major awards player. In fact, the last two Best Picture winners were from Fox Searchlight, and 20th Century Fox overall is responsible for three of the eight nominees this year. That's mighty impressive, but is it due to savvy awards campaigning or having built a strong relationship with Academy voters? That means to all of those who become Academy voters next year under the new rules, expect some goodies from Fox and Fox Searchlight. Mad Max Fury Road 
isn't the first time that the Academy has made sweeping changes to the rules for the Oscars in the hopes of keeping up with the times. See, way back in 2009, audiences were pretty ticked off that The Dark Knight wasn't even nominated for Best Picture. Blaming the snub on the fact that there were only a mere five slots for Best Picture, the Academy expanded the category to up to ten slots. See, if they'd made it a hard and fast ten, maybe Straight Outta Compton would have been nominated, and this whole Whiteout 2 controversy would have been totally avoided. Ah, the benefit of hindsight. Anyway, ironically, since the expansion of the category, it's only meant that more Oscar bait picks got nominated, with many of them not having any real chance of winning, but at least getting to put Best Picture nominee on their Blu-ray box. Only now, seven years later, has the expanded category finally allowed a genre blockbuster to compete. But beyond following in the Dark Knight's footsteps, a lot of Mad Max Fury Road's award success can be credited to George Miller, who has a very healthy relationship with the Academy. While he got his first Oscar nom in 1993 for co-writing Lorenzo's Oil, he's already been in the thick of awards season twice. First with Babe, which was also nominated for Best Picture, and then Happy Feet, which won Best Animated Feature. So surely Miller is a friendly face to Academy voters, even if his work is radically different here. But will Mad Max Fury Road get the nomination and the win? Or will it be up to another genre blockbuster to take that next step? As the summer release, one has to admit that Mad Max Fury Road has lost some momentum, and fanboys aren't pushing for it anymore either, as many have thrown it over already for Star Wars The Force Awakens. Oh, it is brutal out there, right Max? The Martian. As we just discussed, Fox has done incredibly well this awards season for a mainstream studio, and The Martian is their most mainstream awards entry. But the movie is so darn uplifting, so finely crafted, that it's still a very strong contender to actually win. Fox nabbed both Best Picture awards at the Golden Globes, and The Martian is on almost every top ten list imaginable. And here at the Oscars, it's seven nominations strong, meaning everybody liked it across Tinseltown. But does everybody feel passionate about it? That's what it'll take to win here, and it's never a good sign when a Best Picture contender's director isn't nominated as well. Plus, it doesn't seem entirely fresh coming right on the heels of Gravity and Interstellar, the latter which didn't even earn a nomination and the former which didn't win. Yes, when you get right down to it, The Martian could find itself shut out with The Revenant dominating in the creative categories and Mad Max Fury Road in the more technical categories. But if the Academy decides to be more democratic, well, The Martian's best shots at a big win are Best Actor and Best Picture. The Revenant. Suddenly, The Revenant is the movie to beat. Behold, the power of the Golden Globes. This is why studios are willing to pay for him, Ricky. Because before the Golden Globes, it was the new Heaven's Gate, plagued by rumors that Alejandro Inarritu was abusing his cast and crew, not to mention had estranged his producer over the insistence of shooting with natural light and real snow, which had caused the budget to balloon to $135 million. But after the Golden Globes, it's now the Oscar frontrunner, and moviegoers are so curious, it's topping the box office charts. Hey, when you already spent that much, why not shell out a few extra bucks for the Hollywood Foreign Press Association stamp of approval? So, is The Revenant a sure thing on Oscar night as well? Not quite, and here's why. The biggest reason is that it wasn't even nominated for the SAG equivalent of Best Picture, and actors are the biggest voting bloc in the Academy. And speaking of guilds, as I said moments ago, the Producers Guild picked the Big Short as Best Picture, so that bloc likely won't go to The Revenant either. We'll see who wins over at the Directors Guild, but at this rate, it seems the Oscars might simply prove all those Golden Globes were bought. Room. always one quirky Best Picture nominee that nobody but Academy voters and cinephiles has seen, and this year it's Room. This is the nominee that when announced will have everyone at home going, who? But what's different this time is that pretty much anyone who has seen Room, even if their numbers are small, agrees it deserves to be here. However, this is also as far as it will get, at least when it comes to Best Picture. See, Room has just four nominations, but what a quartet! 
Best Picture, Best Actress, Best Director, and Best Adapted Screenplay. Many consider Best Actress for Brie Larson a lock, and considering the democratic way in which Oscars are usually distributed, that's likely to be its only win. But if Room wins any other Oscars, it's most likely to be Best Adapted Screenplay. With Director, the real win is Letty Abramson taking Ridley Scott's spot. So, Room deserves to be nominated for Best Picture, but with seven other nominations it has no chance of winning? This is the downside of inflating this category. Spotlight. If it's to be believed that the SAG Awards predict the Best Picture winner, and they often do, again because they represent such a big voting block, then the Big Short and Spotlight are the only real contenders here. That's because the other three SAG Best Picture nominees, Beasts of No Nation, Straight Outta Compton, and Trumbo, weren't even nominated. Then again, those three films were mostly ignored by the Academy, and in the case of Beasts of No Nation, totally shut out. So maybe there's been an overall shift that's even swayed the actors? To be fair, any other year Spotlight would be a frontrunner, but this is an unusually competitive year with a lot of strong and aggressive message movies. What's more, Spotlight is hard to nail down. Is it the new All the President's Men celebrating investigative journalism? Or is it exposing the rampant sex abuse in the Catholic Church? If Academy voters can't definitely say what they're voting for, will they vote for Spotlight? Furthermore, Spotlight has not captured the public's attention. It's done moderate box office, but nobody is really talking about it. That could be because, like The Big Short, it's about something people don't want to talk about, even if it is true. But at least The Big Short is zany and breaks the fourth wall and has Brad Pitt and Adam McKay. Michael Keaton is so last year, right? And isn't Mark Ruffalo always nominated? Plus, I don't know about you, but having seen Spotlight, well, I'd believe it if the Catholic Church was pulling all the strings it can to keep this movie from winning. And those are the 2016 Best Picture nominees. Which films are you rooting for? Which films are you rooting against? And which films have you actually seen? Be sure to leave your comments down below, as well as vote and be on the trailer's annual Oscar poll via the link in the video description. I'm Grace Randolph, and I hope you'll check out the rest of BTT's Oscar coverage right now.